G'day mates, Poker Dragon here. Since Christmas is only a couple of weeks away and we're still thinking about in what for Christmas, I still think of the great presents I got years ago. Like the Nintendo 64. Me, my friends and my family have so many fond memories with that system. And my older still sister still has the console to this very day. And I would like to show everyone my top 10 favorite games for the Nintendo 64. Keep in mind, if you don't see your favorite game on the list, my apologies. But this is basically my list. That being said, let's get started with my top 10 favorite Nintendo 64 games. Number 10. Cruisin' World. This is one of the first games that we practically got along with the Nintendo 64 system. And it was great! We could race each other around the world with the great selection of vehicles, like the car with free wheels, and an army ATV, and a tow truck. There were also game modes where you can customize your own vehicles and give them power levels. And no, they cannot go into a power level of over 9,000. This game was a great arcade racer. Give it a play if you ever get the chance. Number 9 Hybrid Heaven Before Konami became the absolute screw-ups as we all know today, and they still are, back then they were the gaming gods! With Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania City of the Night, and this game apparently. This was the only good RPG for the Nintendo 64, you know, unlike that other one. And Hybrid Heaven was great! It had a fantastic storyline, it had an interesting battle systems. Like, the more you punch with your left arm, the more it becomes powerful over time. And you can level up other parts of your body other than your arms. Like your legs, body, and your head. And no, you cannot level up your crotch, in case you were wondering. It has great music, it suits the atmosphere really well, it has interesting monsters for you to fight, and um, the reason why this game is not higher on the list is because other than using a save battery unlike other Nintendo 64 titles, you have to use one of those faulty controller packs that sometimes becomes useless over time after certain uses. I just wish this game got a remake. but. Sadly, you know Konami. Number 8 Diddy Kong Racing! Oh man, the memories with this one. The venture mode and finding the keys, getting those silver coins, beating the bosses. Jeez, this game brings back so many memories. My favorite racer for this game is Tip Top because despite being a turtle, he is really fast. Much better than Crunch. Seriously, whoever uses Crunch. The, the tracks that you get to play on are great. Some even come with their own loop-de-loops. And you can have free kinds of vehicles you can use. A car, hovercraft, and a plane. There was supposed to be a sequel for this game, but it didn't really happen. But we did get a Nintendo DS port of this game, though. Then it wasn't very good. Number 7 Banjo Kazooie. I remember seeing this on the television commercial when I was very young. It was funny. And it made me want to buy the game. And you know what? I was disappointed. This game was a fantastic adventure trying to save Banjo's sister from Guntur of the Witch. Now, I know what you guys are probably going to be asking. What about Banjo Tooie? Yes, that game was great, but I've only played the, the game little bits here and there back then. That I didn't really have time to complete the game 100% on multiple playthroughs. I remember completing Banjo-Kazooie 100% on multiple playthroughs because I know it so well. The first game was fantastic. You can learn moves from the worlds you visit, you can explore fantastic levels, except for Rusty Bucket Bay. I HATE THAT LEVEL! 
The only thing that kind of annoyed me back then while you were playing this on the Nintendo 64 was that while you were collecting musical notes while you were at the level, if you die at any point and you have to go back to the world, you have to collect all of the notes all over again. But thank God that was fixed from the Xbox One version. Thank God. Now, I just wish Rare could just make a decent Banjo-Kazooie platforming game, rather than that pathetic nuts and bolts rubbish. Number 6 Super Smash Brothers! I remember seeing this in a local in a local electronical display in Kmart years ago when it showed the tutorial and how the battle system works. I remember renting this game a lot back in the day and it was challenging trying to unlock all the extra characters like Ness and Captain Falcon, but it was fun. Blasting through the classic mode and learning and learning history that through the character bios. I was excited about Melee but I missed it because my mother thought I had way too much video games to play with, so I kinda missed out on it. So I basically made do with the classic Super Smash Bros. before Brawl came out on the Wii. <sighs> now I just wish we could just re-download this classic Nintendo 64 title along with Melee on the Nintendo eShop. Come on Nintendo, make it happen! Number 5 Perfect Dark During the final years of the Nintendo 64's life cycle, we got introduced to Conker's Back, Fur Day, and Perfect Dark. Now, Perfect Dark was a step up from GoldenEye. Sure, GoldenEye had great gameplay, awesome weapons, and a great soundtrack, but it was off of a movie license. So Rare had to make a shooter with its own identity. That's not off of a movie license. And that gave birth to Perfect Dark. It had great weapons, more sci-fi gadgets for you to use, and an amazing soundtrack that suits the atmosphere it's set in. With a firing range that you can also test out. The game had an amazing story with fantastic voice acting. And the best part about this game you can rescue an alien that's named Elvis. Number 4 Super Mario 64 Oh, the memories I had with this one. Me and my mother used to play this game a lot when I was young. My mom was the, actually the first one to show me where to get the flying cap. The music was amazing, especially Jolly Roger Bay. I can fall asleep to that song for hours. And this game and getting all 125 stars was just a great journey, exploring the castle and the wells and the lion side and the paintings. Me and my mom played this for hours, trying to complete the game on 100% and discovering Yoshi at the top of the castle that gave us loads of lives and a new triple jump move. Ah, <sighs> the memories. I will sure miss them. Number 3 Turok Dinosaur Hunter I, Again, I remember hiring this game multiple times at the local video game store just to play it on a weekend. Having fun with it with the destruction weapons you can get and seeing those hunter coins just scream over and over and over if you get to launch them sky high. Yeah, it was hilarious. That never gets old. This game doesn't really have a story to tell within the game which is why it was basically explained in the form of a comic book in the game's manual. The music was great, it always gets you pumped up just to shoot some hunters and dinosaurs in the face. And the levels are long as hell. The weapons are destructive and the bosses are fantastic. You can even find a T-Rex that fires a laser beam. I'm 
still weirded out on how your main character holds the key like he's Link from The Legend of Zelda. Speaking of... Number 2. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I remember, again, hiring this game from a local video game store until I can buy a real copy months later. This game was amazing, with its massive world, characters you can interact with, and the music that you can listen to. And the story was great. Now, I know people that are again, again going to ask, why not Majora's Mask? Well, that's simple. Majora's Mask had only four dungeons. Ocarina of Time had eight dungeons. Sure, Majora's Mask has a side quest, which sometimes you have to wait in order to start and finish it. Ocarina of Time doesn't really do that. You just finish the side quest, get your award, and boom, done. There's no waiting to be in between. Plus, you don't have, and plus, you don't have to worry about a giant moon falling on top of you, giving you pressure under a free day time limit. Seriously, when I saw that moon for the first time years ago, I was terrified of that thing. Hakamina at time, I get just the joy at a slow pace with the great memories of a journey that lies ahead. And my number one favorite Nintendo 64 game is... Killer Instinct Gold! Oh, 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 oh man! This game was sick when I played it for the first time. It was fast paced and it made a perfect example of what the Nintendo 64 controller could do for a fighting game. Which kind of makes me wonder um, why wasn't a Street Fighter released for the Nintendo 64 at the time. And unlike the Killer Instinct 2 arcade counterpart, Killer Instinct Gold had more modes that you can play on, like Team Elimination. Where you can, where you have to kill the enemy team by either performing ultra combos, fatalities, or ultimates to annihilate them all. I remember hiring this game multiple times at my local video renting store and playing it with friends. It was great. I prefer the Nintendo 64, 64 version over the arcade because with the cheats you can activate on this version of the game, you could really experience on what Killer Instinct Gold is all about. And you can still play this game if you got in your hands on the Rare Replay on the Xbox One. I just wish you could play Killer Instinct Gold with and with the cheats online. But that would be very fun. Oh well. And well, that's it. If there's a Nintendo 64 game that you guys enjoyed, please let me know in the comment section below. My name is Poké Dragon, and I wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for watching.